Hello, today I'm here with W.H. Auden's famous poem, Musée de Beaux-Arts, or the Museum of the Fine Arts. Uh, the poem recounts uh, W.H. Auden's visit to a Museum of Fine Arts in 1939 in Brussels, Belgium. Um, actually, the poem is written uh, uh, a few months before the outbreak of the Second World War and uh, just after W.H. Auden's uh, journey to Asia, um, in which he, uh, he had the experience of the China-Japan War. So he was kind of hopeless about the human conditions and he wrote this poem. In this poem, um, he actually talks about two different paintings and in these two paintings he tries to to just uh, tell us that notions of sacrifice, notions of death, notions of suffering are in, related to these things and themes are not um, are not just uh, just experienced by all and if you're sorry, if you're full of sorrow, if you're upset, if if you're waiting your death, it, it's not anyone uh, anyone's business. So other people don't care about you. That life has its own course, regardless of what is happening to you. Um, he sees this as a miserable condition that human beings can show no sympathy. Uh, but anyway, we should know that W. Jordan is famous for this. That he he slaps you with the truth, with what is real, and he thinks this is one of the real tasks of poetry. And um, it, this is actually, this shows part of his philosophy of poetry. So um, this is typical of Auden. And unlike um, his immediate um, fathers, poetic fathers, like uh, T.S. Eliot and uh, Ezra Pan and other modernists, Auden is not vague in abstract. He uses words. So um, um, as much as T.S. Eliot doesn't use words or words are, were, uh, or where our even our absentees in his poems. In case of W. Shodan, he's wordy, he explains, he provides details. So he can talk about two paintings, but it's not it's not just an illusion. He he provides details as if we were also accompanying him in visiting that museum. So this is how W. Shodan avoids abstractions, and as if, if we cannot see the paintings, he provides us uh, with minute uh, characteristics of those paintings or the subject matter of them. About suffering, they were never wrong, the old masters. By the old masters, he means the ancient classical artists. So they have always represented suffering and its reality. And how is, what is that reality? It is like that, that nobody cares about your suffering. How well they understood its human position, its human position. So we are human beings and that's natural. And uh, there are many, uh, many, uh, pronouns in this poem used instead of the real words. Um, this is this seems to be technically intentional by the poet. It's human position, how it takes place, again, suffering, while someone else is eating or opening a window or just walking dolly along. So people are living their lives while, while you're crying, while you're experiencing a painful situation. But, but somebody is eating, somebody is opening the window, watching outside, somebody is, uh, you know, just walking. But but they are not suffering with you. you we, have, we all have experienced that. When when we uh, lose a dear one, when, uh, when it person who is so close to us is, is dead. Uh, we are suffering, we are full of pain. Other people are there, they try to sympathize, but, but even they do that, even though they do that, it seems that they are not experiencing what we are experiencing. And this is what the old masters can represent uh, what, while, uh, while maybe ordinary people cannot understand it. So Auden thinks that in case of the representation of suffering, especially that Auden and his generation were living in an age of suffering, they had experienced uh, a world war already and a second one was at hand. So he knows that nobody uh, would kind of sympathize with you or empathize, 
if you are if, if you want to be more precise in using a word how when the aged are reverently passionately waiting for the miraculous birth miraculous birth is a reference to death Auden is using a euphemism maybe he's avoiding uh, the term uh, the term death rather he, he calls it a miracle birth the rebirth the resurrection after death he means there always must be children so while old people are expecting death this is the most inevitable inevitable thing that they they can evade children who did who did not especially want it again death wanted to happen skating on a pond at the edge of the woods so children are full of life full of life full of dynamism they are they, they are so alive uh so full of life that they cannot even think about death that they have no understanding of death while uh, most of the thoughts of an old person is focused on death so this is the difference why this person is thinking thinking about death or overthinking about it even this child has no idea of death at all and this is the differences of the human beings they never forgot again the ancient masters of art they never forgot i i've used some color coding so that it would be easier for you to follow uh, the uh, audience not using the exact term that even the dreadful martyrdom must run its course anyhow in a corner here um, he's talking about a painting a specific painting uh which is placed in that uh musee or museum anyhow in a corner some untidy spot where the dogs go on with their doggy life i will show you the painting the, the painting is full of dogs where the dogs go on with uh, go on with their doggy life and they torture his horse scratches his innocent uh scratch we mean we know its meaning is innocent the martyrs in a sense uh behind on a tree so uh, so even if you're a martyr even if it's it's a case of sacrifice sacrifice for others maybe sacrifice happens for someone most of the times for a group of people it's happening but but here even in the case of martyrdom nobody cares you're doing that for them but they don't care and look at the painting the, the painting is called the massacre of the innocents and here we see that everyone is just living, everyone is engaged in their own life. Nobody is caring about the massacre of innocence happening at this corner of the painting, maybe, or other corners. So, so nobody is caring about other people's suffering. Everyone is engaged with their lives. And you see many dogs here and there in this painting. Here, one, two. We can we can check out three, four, and uh, five. If if uh, you just search, you may find. Even more. So this is uh, this is how Odin is trying to provide details for us that the, the the dog are living their doggy life, and human beings are also living their careless kind of doggy life too, without human compassion maybe. And then he moves to another painting, Bruegel's Icarus. I will show that painting too. And if you're interested, you can uh, listen to my explanations provided in a similar poem by William Carlos Williams called Icarus. Anyway, in Bruegel's Icarus, uh, for instance, how everything turns away quite leisurely from the disaster. Icarus is dying. Icarus had experienced the fall from the top of the sky nearby the sun to a lake or something like that, a river, and nobody cares there. In Bruegel's Icarus, for instance, how everything turns away quite leisurely. Life has its own course from the disaster. The plowman may have heard the splash, the forsaken cry, and check out the details. We don't we don't see the painting, but Odin is providing detail. The forsaken cry, but for him, I was not an important failure. For for that plowman, the sun shone as it had on the white legs disappearing in the green water. The sun was the cause, and the sun doesn't care. And the expensive, delicate ship. That must have seen something amazing. Even the people, the passengers in that ship has enjoyed. Oh, a human being is just falling down from the sky. So they have enjoyed the excitement of that moment. Something amazing. Boy falling out of out of the sky. Had somewhere to get to. They, they, the ship had a destination. 
he sailed calmly on. And this is the painting. You see Icarus here in one corner of the painting, and this is intentional. This is how that old master again has put the, uh, in that case, in the other painting, the sacrifice, and here the painful moment in one corner. Nobody is caring. Uh, this man is most probably watching Icarus' father, and the shepherd here, shepherd is carelessly watching. Maybe he's he's looking at something more interesting, a flying man, Daedalus. And we see instead of Icarus, who is the subject of the painting, the plowman is at the center, is located at the, at the center of the painting. He's not even looking at. And we see this ship here, a, a, a human being is just, and another one uh, here are just watching. Maybe they are even, uh, looking thinking that they are looking at a very interesting kind of scenery or something and the shape everything the sun everything is following the course of his life his due course except for Icarus maybe he's also following his due course he's dying so this was my explanation about this poem I hope you've enjoyed it and hopefully I can see you in my next videos